before June 23rd in America, I doubt very much an American knew Brexit. They probably thought it was some form of dance. <laughs> and Farage might have been a French car. <laughs> but there are two words now that roll off Americans' tongues, Brexit and Farage. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you uh, a good friend of mine and one of the most devoted politicians that I have ever been around, Nigel Farage. Well, Jerry, thank you. I was asked uh, by a couple of media organizations, what was the mood like at this party this evening? I said, well, it was a bit of a mixture uh, between joy and disbelief. <laughs> There is still a level of disbelief, still seven months later, that we actually won with Brexit. There's still, amongst campaigners, disbelief that Trump has won. And it's time now, please, to end that disbelief and to say, we did it! I uh, spent most of my life in politics being regarded, I suppose, as the patron saint of lost causes. <laughs> Having to spend several hours every day drowning my sorrows with English pints of beer because that's all I ever did if you read the British press. Uh, but I, I really believe this. Through most of my life, what happens in America in terms of social trends or developments, we follow four or five years later. America is the leader. Now, I would like to think in my own little way, that what we did with Brexit was the beginning of what is going to turn out to be a global revolution and that Trump's victory is a part of that. Now I went to the Republican uh, convention, as Phil mentioned, uh, really for a bit of R&R, &R, uh, just to sort of get away from things. And the absolute truth of the story is, that we'd been at the night of the Trump speech and we'd been out to a bar afterwards to um, have drinks um, and a couple of ribs or whatever it was um, and we got back to the hotel, it was 4am and I said to Andy Wigmore, I said, you know what, I've got a really good idea. Why don't we have just one more before we go to bed? <laughs> at which we bump into the Mississippians who are flying out at seven the next morning and who have taken the mature adult decision that going to bed's a complete waste of time. And yeah, the rest is history. I came to Mississippi, I met Phil. Uh, I think there was a degree of collusion uh, between the governor and Banks and Co. Um, and before I knew it, uh, Donald Trump was saying to me, now, when I get to this bit in my speech, I'll introduce you. I said, you serious? I said, you mean you're the Walmart back? And I came back, and this is now my eighth visit, I think, back yeah. to the States since Phil, I came uh, to Mississippi. Uh, and I have to say, at times, it wasn't necessarily that easy to be helping the Trump campaign. There were one or two low moments. Uh, but I think what's exciting is 2016 will be looked at in 10 years time. It'll be looked at in 100 years time. It'll be looked at as a year of a great pivot, of a great change, a year when nation state democracy reasserted itself, a year when proper decent values reasserted themselves. And I think through 2017, much of this revolution will continue across much of what is left of Mr. Juncker's European Union. <laughs> now I will of course through 2017 continue as leader of a group in the European Parliament to make my useful, constructive and helpful speeches and you can follow those <laughs> as I go. But I'll tell you a funny thing in life, funny thing in life is we all fight battles in our lives and we all you know, have victories and we all have failures. The odd thing is that after our victories, normally there isn't really time to celebrate because we're moving on to the next battle. And what we've got tonight and what we've got tomorrow 
is actually a chance to reflect, is actually a chance to celebrate those amazing victories of 2016. And I agree with Trump. Brexit was great, but Trump becoming the president of the USA is Brexit plus, plus, plus. And he was right when he called it a movement, but a movement can't exist, a movement can't flourish without a leader. And Trump is the only person I've ever met in my life who makes me feel like an introvert. <laughs> He is a larger than life personality. When he was given the rule book for how you run for president, he tore it up, he threw it out of the window. And I guess when I look back in years to come, perhaps the greatest joy of 2016 was that realization as state after state in the Midwest went red, just to see the faces of those CNN presenters. <laughs> Tomorrow, at midday, swearing in as the most powerful man in the world will be this most extraordinary force of nature. Somebody and something that America and global politics has never seen before. Something that may occasionally have a rough edge, but whose instincts are absolutely right, and whose feeling with fellow Americans, ordinary people, out there doing their best is, I think, the closest this country has seen since Ronald Reagan. I believe, I believe he's going to make a very good president, and I'm proud to have played my part, not just in Brexit, but in helping this man become the 45th president of the United States of America. And all that is left, and all that is left, folks is to have fun and have a good party! Thank you! Once again, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the evening. I'm sorry. Hey, Nigel, one this way, Thank you.